all right, this is it. The culmination of the Boost Series. Dual three-port solenoids are probably my favorite setup, and the reason is because you have so much control of what goes into the dome and what comes out of the dome. Uh, very fast acting, and the only downside is you burn one extra output. The way this is set up is very similar to a single three-port. It's just where we're teed off of the reference line, that goes into another tee that feeds two solenoids. One of those solenoids is the output, and one of those solenoids is the fill. I called it output vent. Uh, that's, that's the solenoid that lets air that's in the dome go out. The way that this works is pretty intuitive, actually. So we've got our reference line that's always putting whatever boost is coming out of the turbo into the reference side of the gate. And then as we want to add dome pressure, we open the fill solenoid and it'll put a certain amount in based on duty cycle. And then we say, oh, that's a little more boost than I wanted. I want to back it down just a little bit, but not a lot. That's when the vent solenoid comes into play. It's really easy to hit targets that literally look like this. You say, all right, I'm gonna start on the trans brake and I wanna make 10 pounds of boost. So we're gonna build the 10 pounds of boost and then you let go of the button and it's gonna ramp up to 15 and you go, oh, I really wanted 14. It can make almost square waves. It's really awesome. So this setup is pretty easy to plumb, a little more cost, uh, because you got to buy a second solenoid uh, and probably the biggest downside to it uh, if you have a Terminator X style setup is going to be uh, losing that second output. Um, it's one of those deals where if you don't have a lot of other stuff going on it usually isn't a problem um, but by the time you you know you, you're you're gonna burn up if you use closed loop you use Holly's closed loop you're gonna burn up an input on your dome sensor that's with any of these controls uh, from here down. And uh, you're gonna end up with uh, two outputs burned to control. So if you gotta run things like an electric fan, like most of us are running, if you don't have a standalone controller, then that's gonna be your third output. Uh, and then if you wanted to do something like run a, an auxiliary fuel pump, you're out of outputs. All that said, I'm not trying to talk you out of it, I'm trying to make sure you know what you're doing and before you get too far into this. Um, this works really well both in open loop and in closed loop. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I can set you up an advanced table um, to basically make this work like open loop um, using map-based control, uh, not burning an input. And the, the way that I do that is we treat the first, the fill solenoid, we treat the fill solenoid just like, um, just like we all would treat a three port in a standard setup where we're gonna command a duty cycle for a known target boost and then it's gonna apply that to the dome. And then we use a second table that runs the vent solenoid that's gonna take your target boost versus your actual boost and create an offset in duty cycle. Um, it, it runs that solenoid to create that offset so that it hits a flat line boost target. Um, don't have to use a map based input you know for your dome but then you end up burning the output on the back side so it really just is kind of a, a good option for those of us that have um, our inputs are already used up for other stuff uh, if you got say nitrous on board and you need to bo monitor bottle pressure or say you got uh, you know a trans brake and a bump button and a rev limit or a uh, excuse me, a line lock solenoid button, you wanna run that through the ECU. There's all sorts of different stuff that might burn up too many inputs so that we can't wrap the map sensor back around to feed the input or we can't put a dome sensor in. And when that's the case, not a huge deal because if you got the outputs, you can run dual solenoids. That is pretty much going to conclude my boost control series. Next, I'm gonna head into ignition timing I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, I'm trying to not give all my secrets away, but I'm having a whole lot of fun with this. So just sit back, relax, and I'm gonna try to hit you with some knowledge. Uh, next after that, at some point, I need to do the, the open loop, closed loop explanation that I've been promising. And I'm probably gonna do one on idle controls. 
I'm not sure yet because there's some magic sauce in there that I don't want to get always, you know, give away everything. Um, but uh, for those of you that are watching, like all 17 of you, I appreciate it, and um, we're gonna we're gonna do some cool stuff. Maybe I will give you the secrets and take these down after a while or something. I don't know. I hadn't figured that out yet, but I'm really excited about it. Other thing is, leave me some comments on on some future stuff you want to see. I have not got anything planned past the uh, the timing and uh, open loop, closed loop, and maybe the idle video. Um, so, what do you want to know? Uh, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, we can do another one on data logging. I know that's a that's a biggie. Uh, I went through that kind of basic, and we can do a, a, a higher level data logger. Uh, we can do a how to set up a base tune. Um, there's all sorts of stuff that we can we can come up with. So you guys, give me some feedback. Let me know what you want to see.